I analyzed how much money Fazbear Entertainment has to figure out how they can afford everything we've seen and everything we can expect to come after us in the future. This one entertainment company is massive, and not only its size, but its lengthy history of inventions, restaurants, merchandise, with the ownership changing hands between the all too gruesome murders surrounding it, that unlike the other videos in this series, understanding the timeline of this one so as to understand the company's history and thus their current financial situation is crucial. Fazbear Entertainment is a company whose wealth may very well be somewhere in the tens to hundreds of billions, with the company possessing technology, patents, and licenses that allow them to build animatronics and machines that are so far ahead of their time that time and again their inventions see starry-eyed customers rushing in to buy the company's latest service. So let's begin with the mountains of money that Fazbear first made when it first opened all the way back in the mid-1900s. To get the most accurate reading of the company's history and therefore assets, we are following the ultimate timeline set by one of my favorite channels, The Game Theorists, who had to have broken their backs figuring this out because this was a lot to go through. Assets, of course, being everything the company owns that could be converted into cold hard cash if they ever decided to liquidate all of their assets. When Fazbear's first opened, it started as a simple and successful restaurant under William Afton that had two performers on stage wearing simple costumes of Fred Bear and Bonnie, handmade by William. While we know that William's first restaurant was successful, it wasn't anything beyond enormous at first, simply being a fun diner featuring a small stage show. So if we go with the revenue and average successful restaurant existing sometime around the 1970s in America made, and adjust that number to our modern day, adding on a bit extra for the extra revenue William's unique idea brought in, we find that the restaurant would have made an average of around $50,000 a month or $600,000 a year. Not too bad, with the cost of one of William's homestitch Fredbear or Bonnie suits being a less than consequential a couple thousand dollars each. And this brings us to William's more successful copycat and competitor, Henry. Henry, who saw William's great idea and subsequently came up with Chica's Party World, a restaurant that also entertained its guests with lifelike animals, but instead of being paid employees in suits, this time were five animatronics designed by Henry. Seeing how Chica's Party World was way more successful than the average restaurant, stealing all of William's business and eventually buying him out, which otherwise merged the two restaurants, it's more than likely that Chica's Party World was swinging with the best of them, at least at the lower end of the best of them, presumably being based in the lower foot traffic state of Utah, made a lowball average of $650,000 a month, or $7,800,000 a year. Then looking at Henry's awe-inspiring animatronics, that being early in their design, were immobile, needed a battery pack next to them on the floor and yearly maintenance, we can estimate, based off of similar early Disney animatronics, that each of the five could easily cost one million dollars each. But this was only the beginning. After bailing out William's failing diner and incorporating William's ideas with his engineering, the two rebranded and launched their brand new restaurant, Fred Bear's Family Diner. The pair came up with new and better multi-million dollar animatronics like Foxy, a new Bonnie, created new animatronic bodies for Freddy and Chica, while other less well-received animatronics of the past went into storage, as the two quickly opened up a sister chain called Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, that if anything quickly overshadowed any competition across the US of A, capturing both the attention, hearts, and wallets of eager customers. The highly successful duo of Freddy Fazbear's Diner and its chain of Fazbear Pizza restaurants, if anything like the most successful restaurant chains in the world, and then some, cause what restaurant chain do you know that's so successful as to create its own weekly cartoon show titled Fazbear and Friends, if confined to the United States, could easily bring in roughly $40 billion a year. On the other hand, the cartoon show Fazbear and Friends, if even moderately successful like the average American cartoon show, would rake in another couple to maybe $10 million a year. But piled on top of all of this is the 
true money maker. The one thing that outshines all other sources of revenue by a wide margin. Merchandise. When it comes to merchandise, franchises like Pokemon have made a total of around 8 billion from the combined might of their shows and games, with their merchandise adding on a total of nearly 81 billion onto that. Again, 10 times more than the revenue of every show and game you've ever seen combined. With the same being true for Star Wars, Harry Potter, and Fazbear, but to a lesser degree, making either the same or sometimes triple everything else combined. However, capitalizing on their merchandise, William and Henry sold everything. From masks to refrigerator magnets, t-shirts, bags, coffee mugs, backpacks, blankets, plushies, I mean you name it. With all of their Fazbearulous merch adding on an annual total of somewhere around another 40 to 120 billion dollars, or the nice median number of 80 billion dollars a year. Otherwise, enough money to easily talk someone out of murdering a bunch of kids dressed as a yellow rabbit. But oh, we're not done. As much money as the merchandise, cartoon show, and entire restaurant chain is worth, then there's the price of all of the beyond the state of the art animatronics housed at each and every location. You see, William and Henry didn't just have standard animated electronic characters. They invented and pioneered their way into building animatronics far beyond anything the world had ever seen. Creating fully mobile animatronics, each equipped with state-of-the-art technology as well as hybrid animatronic and performer suits, all patented and licensed under their company Fazbear Entertainment Incorporated. Today, less advanced animatronics at Disney cost anywhere from one to ten million dollars. So each of Fazbear's many advanced animatronics, with their built-in cameras, CPUs, chargeable batteries, as an asset if sold, could be valued at an estimated twenty-five million dollars each. Times this by the base four animatronics that they created, we come to one hundred million for a single restaurant, taking the average number of how many restaurants successful franchises tend to own in the U.S. alone. Fazbear would have somewhere along the lines of 210 locations, giving them a total of $21 billion worth of animatronics. Things were looking very up for William and Henry. Everything was going so well. William kept coming up with ingenious ideas and eventually had an idea for animatronics made out of metal tubes and wires that could move around fluidly, but otherwise the money wouldn't stop coming in. Then tragedy struck as William lost his youngest son, only to soon murder the young daughter of his partner Henry in secret, staining the Fazbear name and bringing Fazbear's diner to a close. With the pizza restaurant still in operation, not knowing what had truly transpired but having a hunch, Henry continued to operate Freddy Fazbear's Pizza for the next couple of years in mourning. As William, on the other hand, used his pile of cash to build a lab, a secret bunker of sorts under his house, along with paying off whoever he needed to keep it secret, where he could engineer his new animatronics. The cost of building this secret bunker, complete with elevator and multiple rooms, let alone the equipment inside of it, and comparing it to the price of large luxury bunkers complete with swimming pools and amenities like their own bars and rooms that simulate the night sky, except replace that with tools and engineering equipment, would cost William around $20 million, with a couple extra million thrown into the pot to keep the workers silent. A small price to pay for the mountains of gold William was already standing on. It was during this time that William, with his skill and obsession of forging the animatronics of tomorrow, started his own company called Afton Robotics LLC, where William went to work inventing the the new fluid animatronics he imagined, and used the company to build whatever new animatronics were needed for any of the pizza locations, and whatever it is that they might do in the future. That if anything like modern robotic companies, and having a technological leg up on the competition, given that William wasn't really one to branch out and most likely used his company to only make animatronics for Fazbear's, would be valued somewhere around 17 billion dollars. And it wasn't too long after this that William would kill again, this time murdering five more children in secret, with Henry finally catching on and throwing William out of the company. Two years went by when finally in 1987, Henry reopened Fazbear's Pizzeria by himself, rolling out four new toy animatronics with built-in safety features like a facial recognition ability that could immediately scan a 
person's face and see if they are registered on any sort of criminal database. With these new animatronics that continue to blow away anything any other company could create came a heftier price tag for their value if they were to be sold, including the new safety features, design, and overall better functions, one of these things would be valued at nearly $35 million, with the four of them being worth a whopping $140 million combined. As for the price tag on this new restaurant, it only lasted two weeks, as William snuck in and murdered five more kids, shutting down the reopening process completely. William then went to work finishing his new improved animatronic designs, creating five more animatronics and his own new restaurant called Circus Baby's Pizza World, which similar to Fazbear's reopening would never see the light of day, as William's headliner animatronic accidentally killed his daughter and he shut the whole place down, putting his fluid animatronics, each valued at $40 million each for a combined $200 million back into storage. Soon after, William Afton would die inside his own springlock suit, and the company Fazbear Entertainment as a franchise would largely be over, with Henry pulling out of the franchise only to come back and reopen the franchise some 30 years later, with the sole purpose of luring out William now stuck in his own springtrap suit and the other haunted animatronics to one last location to burn them all away along with himself. And with that, Fazbear Entertainment and its days of raking in more cash than you could imagine were done. As said, everyone the franchise had touched was dead and gone with it but it wasn't. You see, the thing about a company like Fazbear Entertainment is it's incorporated, meaning that despite whatever lawsuits or troubles may happen for the company, the owner's personal assets remain legally protected, and therefore can be passed on to another in case of their passing. And generally the same thing goes for an LLC. So in the event that I go, I hope someone in my family enjoys my good to downright cringy collection of videos. With the final passing of Henry, and subsequently the last of William Afton's children, the legal rights to all of Fazbear Entertainment and Afton Robotics went to the one surviving person they could go to, being William's wife Clara Afton, who now had the combined might of both companies at her disposal. The company's patents, trademarks, characters, licensing, merchandise, oh. Clara soon revived Fazbear Entertainment, and in taking over the world's leading robotics industry, Afton Robotics, who continued to pioneer the greatest robotic technology the world over, and being under Clara, who is more open to selling to other customers and businesses, would put this company towards the top end of the world's best robotic companies, otherwise being valued at $50 billion. Fazbear's name may have been stained, but Afton Robotics and the heaps of money her husband left her certainly gave Clara the means to rebuild the once great company. Quickly coming up with new ideas and services, Clara changed Fazbear Entertainment Incorporated to an LLC and in partnering with DLZ Shipping Solutions, Clara created the Fazbear Funtime Service, a delivery service that could ship replicas of the company's most beloved animatronics as rentals to anyone to celebrate any occasion, providing different sets of costumes for the characters from anything to Halloween, Christmas, and St. Patrick's Day. And oh boy, did this give the company so much needed cash. Seeing how this was an easily available delivery service that at the very least shipped animatronics all over the US, it doesn't really have any real life counterparts to go off of. No equivalent company to give us some sort of range of how much money they were making. So to dig deeper, the value of this service can instead be based off of how much we think renting a single animatronic would be worth, and scale that number to one heck of a reasonable estimation of how many of these animatronics people have rented based on how many people actually downloaded, or in other words, tried the app or service. While the animatronics were expensive in the past, the cost of renting one of these isn't nearly as much, being somewhere around a measly $150 to more likely $250 an hour. With over 10 million downloads over 4 years, the average customer ordering one bot per occasion with the average party lasting for 4 hours, it seems the company would have made a total of somewhere around $2.5 billion 
billion dollars a year since the service started. Then we come to FNAF VR, the games the company made to ultimately do away with any suspicion and mistrust, making light of their horrific past in people's minds, which made them around another $10 million. So with the combined revenue of all of Fazbear's ventures, and having put the company name of Fazbear Entertainment back on the map, Clara Afton built the absolutely monstrous Mega Pizza Plex, an entertainment, food, games, and theme park all rolled into one, with a host of unique attractions and brand new punk rock animatronics who performed on the largest stage she could possibly build. The Mega Pizza Plex spans at three massive stories tall, has seven floors, a mini golf course, dance floor, arcade floor, has its own massive raceway, variety of kitchens, and underground labyrinth of tunnels, sewers, and specialized rooms to repair any of its main animatronics or host of near sentient worker bots, all built on top of the original Freddy Fazbear's Diner. The cost of building this place alone would cost the likes of an entirely inside Disney theme park and be valued near the same, minus some of the size and cost to build the rides, instead being replaced by its state-of-the-art technology and new performing animatronics, putting the price towards building the Mega Pizza Plex and its many unique areas somewhere around $4 billion. With its annual revenue, thanks to admission, cost of food, and other services, hitting somewhere around $6 million a day, or otherwise $2,555,000,000 in revenue a year. With each of the five new improved glam rock animatronics and daycare attendant with their improved strength, unique functions, and technology, costing upwards of $100 million each. The 40 to 50 glam rock endoskeletons costing $70 million each, the enormous DJ costing another $150 million, along with the price of the 27 functioning staff bots we encounter with more surely hidden in other rooms, each costing around $20 million each, giving a total of $4,790,000,000 worth of animatronics. In all, the old Fazbear Entertainment Inc. with their many restaurants and animatronics had a net worth of $141,002,000,000, with the new revived modern Fazbear Entertainment LLC having a total net worth of $11,300,000,000, not counting Afton Robotics. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. As outrageous as the price for the animatronics is, they could be way more expensive by real world standards due to the fact that, just as we went over in the video describing all the technology that the animatronics actually have in them, without the designs and technology being provided by the inventor, no one else in the world can create one of these things for any price. So if you want to see what the animatronics are actually made out of, that makes them so so scary, then you might want to check out this video. See you in the next one.